G'day, my name's Cozzy, we're here in Cambodia. And in the next half an hour, I'll show you around a charity that we set up here called Cows for Cambodia. Essentially, we're empowering Cambodian families by giving them a cow, they get to keep the calf, and when they have a calf, they're not poor anymore, which is really, really cool. But before we get into the nuts and bolts of how the charity works, I thought I'd better show you around. Cambodia is one of the poorest countries in Asia, with almost one third of its population living below the poverty line. 45% of Cambodian children are underweight, and over 60% of Cambodians don't have access to good drinking water. Tens of thousands of children in Cambodia die each year from preventable diseases. Infant mortality is 14 times higher than it is in Western countries. Cambodia had a quarter of a million people killed during the Vietnam War and is still trying to recover from the genocide perpetrated by Pol Pot and the Khmer Rouge in 1975. Can you imagine losing one third of your town or city's population in just three years? Due to this atrocity, more than half of Cambodia's population today are aged under 25. Yet despite all the heartache, I've personally found Cambodians to be one of the happiest races of people on earth. Let me explain how Cows for Cambodia actually works. I buy a pregnant cow and loan it to a poor family. They care for the cow and then they get to keep its baby. I'm essentially a bank that loans cows. For a Cambodian earning only a couple of dollars a day, it is life changing if you own your own cow. You can sell a calf each year for around 600 US dollars. You can use your cow in the rice fields. You use the manure for fertilizer plus more. Having a cow almost doubles the family's annual income. Here in Cambodia, we do contracts for every single cow we give to every single family. So they actually sign a contract that's written in Khmer, the Cambodian language, and they agree to certain principles. Like if the cow's not looked after, we can take her back. If the cow leaves her village, we can take her back. Or if the cow loses weight, we can take her back. So we really have that set in stone. Now this is actually interesting. 95% of the cows that we give away are given to women. We love the idea of empowering women and I think that here in these Cambodian villages, if something's to work well, it's got to be driven by the female in the house. I also believe that it empowers women in the village as a whole. So 95% of our contracts are given to the mums of kids like this. Life for any animal in Asia is far tougher than Australia. The cats are skinny, the chooks are skinny, cows are skinny and the humans are skinnier than what we're used to seeing here in the Western world. I pride myself in making sure that all of my cows are the happiest and healthiest cows in Cambodia and we've got over 50 cows in the program now plus all the babies. With the help of livestock experts like elders I've got vaccination and supplement plans for all of my cows. Ready? My background's in agriculture, specialising in livestock production, so three times a year I personally come over to vaccinate all of my cows. I also love teaching other Australians and I want to get more Aussies involved in this hands-on charity with fundraising tours to join me over here in Cambodia. The first stage of the process is actually going out and buying a cow to give to the poor family. Are you asking how old it is, Jeff? Can you say it's uh, four years? Now. Four years? Four years. And how much does he want for it? Look for man money. Buy the ham. Oh, buy the ham. He says uh, this one is uh, 850. 850? 850. Oh, cannot. Tell him our best price is 650. He's not going to take it, but. Uh, that's a blind. No. <laughs> He says no? Yeah. Can't pay more than 750 for it. The walk off. <laughs> so I'll walk the, away. I'll walk away. Alright, 750. Basically the, the plan with the walk off is that we offer a final <laughs> price <laughs> and then we walk off to pretend we're not interested. In actual fact we're gonna buy it anyway. Here's the walk off. So tell him um, our best price, final yeah. price, yeah. 
is 750. That's the best we can do. Yeah, some lay chong croy with chop to from Peru hal. Yo ban lo. Lo kat. Lo man te. So finally, uh, I tried to uh, persuade him to accept uh, 750. Yeah. But he still needs like ten dollars more. But I say 750, 750. Just like that. So he'll take 750. Don't pay the high. Okay. Uh, 50. 750. Oh. Okay. 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 Oh, Akun. Akun Tom Tom. Ah. Very good. Very good. <laughs> a victim of the walk-off. <laughs> <laughs> After all that, the cow's been purchased for 750 US dollars, which includes delivery to our farm that's almost five kilometers away. So this girl has now entered our program. So we've found her a family. So now she comes here to be tagged. She gets three injections, a multivitamin injection, a seven in one vaccine to prevent diseases, and also one that kills all the worms and liver fluke and all the parasites. So she leaves here a lot healthier than she came in. Every family we work with has an amazing story. SA29's owner is a young girl with a visible birth defect there on her left arm. As if that wouldn't make life tough enough over here in Cambodia, this girl has gone on to set up her own laundry business to try to earn her family extra money and she also grows herbs to sell at the market. I love the pride that this girl has in herself, so that made her a perfect recipient for a cow. <laughs> Howdy folks, my name's Cozzy and I'm showing you around the charity that I set up called Cows for Cambodia. You can't help everyone, but you can help someone. So I bought a cattle farm over here in Cambodia and now I loan my cows to the poor families. They get to keep the cow's calf, then I take my cow back and loan her to the next family. It works really well. The Cambodians treat their cows like royalty and several of our families actually sleep with the cow inside their house. But no relationship is stronger than the young boy who looks after our prize charity bull. This young fella just blows me away every time I'm here. At only 11 years of age, while most kids have got their head wrapped up in an iPad, this young fella spends hours every day making sure that this bull is kept in perfect condition. It comes as no surprise what his plans are, what he wants to do when he grows up. This bull's job is to mate with all 50 cows in the charity and his pregnancy rate, almost 90%. That's my boy. He's so special that the local monks bless the bull for us every single time we're here. Cambodian farming practices are decades behind the Western world, and this causes me my fair share of headaches. On one of our house visits, this family insists that their cow is not pregnant. How do they know? Well, they tested her using a human pregnancy test kit, which of course doesn't work on cows. She went to the pharmacist, and you know the pharmacist told her that it can be for both human and animal. Before I left the family, they had informed me that the boy had broken his arm 12 months ago. Back then, the family didn't have money to take the kid to hospital, so they got the local shaman out, which is like a witch doctor, to treat him instead. 
Sadly, it didn't work, and now the bones have healed in his arm in the wrong position, and he's just started to lose feeling right up through his hand. Sometimes in Cambodia, I just go from one problem to the next, and sometimes there's just nothing you can do to help. To keep as much weight on our cows as possible, we spend money buying extra hay to feed the cows. Now, I'll never forget the first time I ordered a truckload of hay in Cambodia. My guide came racing over to me saying, Mr. Cozzy, Mr. Cozzy, your hay, your hay, it's arrived. And this was my view that greeted me. There's no Mack trucks out here, my friends. Hay is transported in carts drawn by cows. Every time the cows rock up with my shipments of hay, it really does blow me away. I just love to sit back and watch. I mean, have a look at it. You would almost think you're way back in the 1800s. I pay only $20 for a truckload of hay and normally three or four truckloads rock up at once. It is quite the spectacle. It's something that I love, but it also draws the attention of the local kids. We urge you all to donate. It would be awesome if you could spend five bucks, 10 bucks, 20 bucks, and we promise that we will use it very wisely to continue our work over here in Cambodia. If you want to donate, uh, and we'd love you to, head to cowsforcambodia.com.au. I've got this great saying that is, don't donate, participate. We are taking some groups of Australians over to Cambodia to join me on a fundraising trip where we will continue our work with the cows, families, and the school here in this beautiful village. My name's Cozzy and I'm showing you around a charity I set up called Cows for Cambodia where we break the poverty cycle by loaning people cows. But that's not all we do out in this isolated little village. It's your happy As Cows for Cambodia, we never expected to take on a school. Um, and this place is pretty special because one night we'd just been working with the cows all day and um, we were just driving back and it was dark. And um, we heard all these kids chanting and there was a light on and I was like, chop, chop, chop to the tuk-tuk, stop, well, what, what's, what's this? And we went back and had a look and it was a school. So we were pretty blown away. My school, I built it in 2013 because I saw many kids they live in my village they don't have money to support for the English if they want to study at the city they spend much many money but the family here it's look very very poor and then I collect all of them and then I build the small school like this for them to study here. Hey, listen up, Aussies. I want to build these kids a bigger school, but I need your help. It's going to cost me around $2,900, and I want to do it the next trip over here in Cambodia in a couple of months. So please donate now. Donate absolutely anything. Thank you. We don't have the money, but uh, we have the heart. We have the heart, so we have to show our heart, and we want, we want to, uh, let's say, uh, uh, to... Even just talking about education brings a tear to the eyes of lots of the older Cambodians because they understand the magnitude of this opportunity for the kids today. When many of them could never even possibly have dreamed of being able to afford to go to school. Because education is a very important Education uh, make the people uh, let's say to have a good life. I've been looking after this school for two years, and best of all, to supply these kids with materials that they need for success costs hardly anything at all. We always head into the city to stock up on supplies before heading out to the school. Yeah, twenty of those. Oh, take... yeah. What about a ruler? Do they use ruler? Oh, yeah, yes, ruler. ruler. Yeah, yeah. How, how much yeah. for a hundred? Ani ani maroya. Maroya kama. Labla ten dollars. Ten dollars. Yeah, ten dollars. Yeah. 
A big thing we've done is get people of Australia uh, through our Facebook pages to come and actually visit the village. So it's one thing to, to actually donate to a charity, I think, but I like to say don't donate, participate. So I'm dead keen for people to actually come over and experience the things that, that we've created here that people can come and be a part of. How's this? One of the best things that you can do for this school is to actually take the class yourself. That's right, you be the teacher. And every single person watching this right now can do it. I love that school. I love all of these kids. Um, and to think that if they can learn English, that will really change their lives. So the more English they know, the more money that they will earn in the future and hopefully they can break the poverty cycle from their families. How many fingers? Five. You don't need to be a teacher, you just need basic English skills. In fact, you can come along and join me in Cambodia as I'm taking over some groups of Australians on a fundraising trip to Cambodia. Stay tuned for more information on that. I even used the kids in the school to help me improve my own Cambodian, which is fairly limited. I think the best thing is that Sala, the teacher, set this school up herself by raising $300, which is huge for these guys. Anyone in life that's having a crack, I love to support. So this school is perfect. It started with 10 students, but it's grown so much. And now, there are 70 students study in my school. But I am very look very hard for all of them when they come. They, they, they doesn't have, there isn't the table enough for all of them to take a seat like that. And sometimes they come here and then to stand, or sometimes they sit on the, the bike to listen me to talk English to all of them like that. Ah, not enough school tables, hey? Well, don't ruin the surprise, folks, but Uncle Cozzy might have that problem sorted. Stick around. Cambodia is one of the poorest countries in Southeast Asia, with so many families struggling to even feed themselves every day. I set up a charity here called Cows for Cambodia, giving cows to people. We also support the local school that's run by the community. And on this trip, they were in bad need of new school desks. Jet runs the charity for me in Cambodia. I didn't tell anybody, so I just know myself, just I, and because he's noticed. And behind the scenes, we both decided to surprise the school with brand new desks. And then uh, we tried to arrange it to make it progress smooth, so everything is uh, perfect. The school teacher Sala, who set this school up from her own money, sometimes has to take out a loan herself to support the school, just to buy simple things like textures and ink. The look on her face said it all when I told her that the school would not only receive brand new school desks, but they'd also get enough supplies for three months. I think the table for this uh, school, it builds, uh, makes it comfortable for the student and make it make them easy to study to get the knowledge from teachers. Cassis uh, has done great things uh, uh, for these schools because the, uh, this school doesn't have the support for other organizations or you know the richest people. So Kasi is the first person to uh, supply, you know, buy the materials like the books, pens, uh, pencils, and the whiteboards, yeah, markers, etc. Kasi is the person who likes to help the people. I describe myself as a very patriotic Australian and I love to hang the Aussie flag over some of our projects here in Cambodia. I believe that you know, our country and their country are, are united in some kind of way and I think it's great for the kids as they're growing up and learning to get a feel of what the Australian culture is like, giving and caring and stuff like that.
I don't think you can beat a day like today. And I, I think people travel for all sorts of reasons. And I think that um, people travel at different levels. Um, for me, spending a day travelling like we did today, buying the students' desks and school books and stuff, and you know, my wife you know, teaching the kids a bit of English, and it's travelling at a far deeper level. You can rock up to uh, France and grab a photo of the Eiffel Tower and jump back in your cab and go to your hotel. I don't think that kind of travel is really for me. Like I like to get deeper and deeper and deeper, and, and you can really immerse yourself in the village, and you get such a bigger kick out of it than you do just rocking up, grabbing a snap and moving on. So as far as travelling goes, or your life goes, like today is a great day. You know, this is like the best day of their year. And really it was 425 US dollars worth of deaths. And, and that comes from our, our Facebook friends and our donors that donate to Cows for Cambodia. That's as simple as that. So um, it's not me, it's really them and the Cambodians that help facilitate all this. I'm just kind of the, the one that helps organise and put it all together. I nothing to say to Kose, but I'm just to say thank you very much. And strong, I'm very strong. Uh, my heart like that for Kosi. They brought everything for me all the time. There's something very rewarding about helping people for no personal gain. It gives you an amazing feeling of a purpose and worth in a world that's filled with materialistic possessions that actually don't really matter. Best of all, anyone watching right now can help. Come over here and take an English lesson for an hour and I can guarantee that you're going to love it as much as the Cambodians will love having you here. That's all we've got time for. I hope you've enjoyed your look around Cambodia and our charity Cows for Cambodia. I've got this great saying that is don't donate, participate. We are taking some groups of Australians over to Cambodia to join me on a fundraising trip where we will continue our work with the cows, families and the school here in this beautiful village. If you want more information on that or if you'd love to make a donation, head to cowsforcambodia.com.au or jump on the Facebook page. And from me, the families and all of the cows, Lehi! That means goodbye. Thanks for supporting Cows for Cambodia. And don't forget, if you want to join me in Cambodia, I do four fundraising trips every single year and it's a travel experience like nothing else. Cowsforcambodia.com has all the info.